Here we go. This is definitely one of those baits. Anytime you're fishing for these deep fish in the winter that you've got to have, have in there. Jigging spoon, blade bait, something of that nature. I would much rather be throwing it on a bait caster, but as deep as these fish are, I felt like I had to go with the spinning rod to get it down there quicker. It just live scope, I mean, Garmin live scope has just completely opened our eyes up to a world that we just, we knew these fish were somewhere out here, but we truly didn't know exactly what they did in the winter, you know? And it's just opened our eyes up to exactly where they're at. I mean, these fish are, you know, deeper than we ever thought they would go. And the big thing is, I mean, you, you can see right here on my live scope, right here, I mean, that's the fish feeding on them. These are all fish feeding right here on the live scope. I mean, they're down there right now and they're biting and that's when you gotta stay on them. And like I said, a bait like this blade bait is a definite fish catching machine. I was on the lake about two weeks ago and uh, they were like a mile farther back in the creek. And for some reason, they've actually pushed back out toward the main lake. We're almost clear out at the mouth of this creek. Using my Garmin uh, forward-facing live scope, I was able to, you know, relocate the bait. We did have a little help from some uh, loons and gulls out here in this area, and it made it a lot easier. But once I got out here, I mean, the bait was absolutely thick. The fish were doing what they were supposed to be doing. So basically with this little blade bait, I mean, it's just, a, it's a piece of metal with lead or tungsten. They make them both ways on the bottom of it. I mean, when and when you drop this bait, it's basically dropping like a spoon, has very little if any action at all. But when you rip that bait due to the way it's shaped, it's gonna vibrate. And a lot of times, you know, that's when you're gonna trigger them into biting. I mean, they're moving around right now down there. I mean, it looks like there's a group of spots that have broke away from the bait. I've kind of lost track of the bait right now, but there's definitely a group of fish that there he is. That didn't very big, came off. You really gotta toy with them. Some days they want that bait sitting almost dead still and there's other days that you've, you've really gotta put a lot of action and, and really kinda get them to react to the bait. When you're on the same little water, I think a lot of times you definitely need to swap up baits. I mean, those fish, believe it or not, I mean, you're putting the bait right on their head. I mean, they're sitting there looking at it. They're staring at it. They're getting a, a really good look at it. And I mean, you can see like right now, they're not even hardly reacting to it. I mean, they're kind of swimming around, following it, chasing it, but they, they really aren't getting aggressive at all to actually trying to eat the bait. You would think if you dropped something down there on them and hit them on the head, they would eat it every time, but they don't always do it. Basically what I'm doing now is I'm just changing colors up a little bit. I mean, the first one I started with was basically, you know, what I would consider uh, uh, Norman Flake. And then this color here is just a little bit more shad type. So uh, one of the two should get it done. The other thing that this bait has is it's actually got three positions that you can actually hook the snap. The bait comes with a snap. so you can actually move the snap into these three positions depending on how you're wanting to fish the bait. Generally, when I'm dropping a bait straight on these fish and I want it to set there, I want it to set level, so I'm gonna hook it more toward the front. But if I wanna put a lot of added action into the bait, then I'm gonna move it toward the back and it's gonna fall more head down. And then when you pull it, it's gonna have a different, different vibration in the water. definitely a good one so you know earlier they were really nipping at it bad and I was putting a lot of action into it and I really backed off this time and uh, wasn't hardly putting any action into it at all I finally just got the bait down there in the middle of the bait ball and just basically left it left it there and that fish just loaded up on it it's just one of those baits in the in the winter that you've got to have no, it is a big spot Thought it was gonna be a, just a big 
bigger spot. Actually, it isn't much bigger, but uh, you can see, definitely got that blade bait. He got him good that time. He ate it. That's the thing that I've found about messing with these deep fish is just you've got to keep playing with them and trying different things. A lot of guys I think get real complacent in the fact that you know you go out one day and all you do is drop on their head and they eat it every time. And then you get into a situation where you're not getting bit, you can see them down there and there's definitely times when they just don't bite. And you've just got to keep playing with them and figuring out what it is that is gonna get them to bite on any given day. There he is. You see, I just, I mean, I was putting no action whatsoever at all in that bait, and I just barely moved it, and he absolutely smoked it. Nice spot right there. An old heavy one there. Now that one is definitely one you'd want to put in your box. I mean, look at the belly on that thing. It has been eaten for absolute days. It's just crazy how many fish, I mean, you can see right now, if you look at my screen, I mean, all of these, all of these white dots are fish out there. I mean, these fish are actually behind the boat. These fish are out in front of the boat. There's a group of fish over here in the middle of the bait right there. I mean, there's just fish everywhere out there right now. You're putting yourself in a situation where you're around a lot of fish, and if you change your presentation up enough, you change your baits up enough, you're gonna, you're gonna be successful at some point. I mean, they like scat. There's one. That's the big one, but. No, fairly small, but a keeper. A little fat dude just been eating like crazy down there. Just a little, little big bite jerk minnow. Little uh, four inch jerk minnow, catching them big old spots on it. There's nothing funner. You know, one of the biggest things that I've kind of learned, sometimes it seems like it's color, and other times it seems like it's just the action of the bait itself. Until you really figure out what they want any given day, you just gotta kind of keep mixing it up. There's another one. Get him fired up again. I bet I can drop that blade bait back down there and catch him. Might be a little better. They always fool you when you catch them down there that deep. They don't really fight when you first hook them. A little better. See all the shad he just spit up. <laughs> Not a giant by any measures, but he's a good one. Them are all live wheel fish, I promise you. Every one of them's 15 inches long. Just uh, one of them deals. I mean, you know, a heavy head is one of the keys. We started kind of doing this with lighter heads, but I've really found that, uh, you know, three quarter, five eighths ounce head, that little gamakatsu hook, I mean, it catches them, it pins them. And uh, just a little uh, four inch uh, jerk minnow. Getting it done. Basically, we got it done with three different baits. When we first pulled out here, one of my favorite baits this time of year to throw on these deep fish is just a, a Spro Carbon blade bait. And I mean, when I first pulled up on them, got on, over the top of them, dropped this, I think I caught one or lost one my first throw, had four or five bites really, really quick, and then they kind of got off it for a minute. An old heavy one there. And then we actually switched colors of the blade bait and, uh, got this color out and it really lit them up for a little bit. I mean, I caught three or four really, really quick on it, but uh, mixing it up was the key. So 
I picked up a, a big bite uh, head. I like a little bit of, you know, number two, three, four aught gamakatsu hook, and, and that's what this big bite true X swimmer head is made with. And just a little big bite jerk minnow. I'm just, just blue back herring. It's just a good neutral color. Got a little greenish blue on the back, you know, pearl on the bottom. But uh, today, you know, everything we did was on a spinning rod. I'm using a Sunline Asa guy as my main line. And then I'm tying an FG knot to fluorocarbon leader. And, you know, a lot of times I'll use Sunline's uh, FC, the fluorocarbon leader material, generally in anywhere from six to 10 pound. If I can get away with heavier, sometimes I'll go to it. But when you're fishing this deep, a lot of times you've got to use a lighter line. But the Sunline FC or a leader material is great line. Sunline Super Sniper is probably day in, day out my go-to. Uh, generally, again, anywhere from seven to, to 10 pound test. The, the beauty of these lines, you can get them in seven, eight, nine, ten. So you've got a lot of variation there. And as far as the rod, I'm, I generally throw two different falcon rods. I've got a 7.6 uh, Expert that I love to throw on these deep fish because you can really, really fight them well. You don't ever put too much pressure on them. But if I'm not throwing that 7.6, I'm just throwing a Falcon 417 Kara. The reel is also important. I mean, I do throw a, a signature series reel, Bass Pro Shop. You want a reel that's got a real smooth drag, nothing that catches, and this Bass Pro Shop reel will get it done. Be a large mouth for me. See him all fired up right there now that I've got him on. See him all right, here's the fish actually coming up and that whole school is actually all fish right there behind you. See them all? Look at them all following him. Come on up here, darling. Yeah, it looks like a big old large mouth, doesn't it? Oh yeah. Big old large mouth. Isn't that crazy? Check that out. Now that is what it's all about. Big old large mouth, we have caught spots. We have caught small mouth today. Can you see that bait buried in his mouth? We're gonna get him released here pretty quick though. But that right there is what it's all about. I mean, you spend enough time playing with your live scope, getting out here using the right baits, switching it up. I mean, that's just, again, that little big bite jerk minnow on a uh, five eighths or three quarter ounce head, dropping it down there and the odds of catching one of them are not too bad. <laughs>